Good evening and thank you for joining us here tonight. I'm Regina on Mark has the night off. Let's get right to the top stories you need to know about tonight. Washingtonians can soon get back to some recreational activities. Earlier today, Governor Jay Inslee announced his plan for a partial reopening of state lands. Here are three key takeaways. First off, the partial reopening will start on May 5th. Second, you can take part in outdoor activities like fishing with your immediate family and golfing. Third, some state parks will open. However, camping, gatherings outside of your household and overnight use are still not allowed. Meanwhile, Colorado and Nevada are now joining the Western States Pact. Governor Inslee announcing that today they join Washington, Oregon and California in working together to reopen state economies in the effort to minimize the spread of the coronavirus. The states will focus on making sure vulnerable populations are protected from the virus. They also want to ensure each state has enough supplies to treat coronavirus patients. The goal is to protect the public through testing, tracking and isolating the virus. Well, we've been getting a lot of questions about what is included in our local coronavirus numbers because some of the biggest clusters of cases are at state run facilities. For example, the Spokane Veterans Home, which is managed by the Washington Department of Veterans Affairs. And as of today, 36 residents and 14 staff members have tested positive for coronavirus. Two residents have died. Some of you asked if those numbers are included in our local numbers from Spokane Regional Health. So we went straight to Spokane's health officer, Dr. Bob Lutz. He said says yes, if the case or facility is in Spokane County, it is included in those local local numbers. So if we look at the latest numbers for the county as of today, we have 349 positive cases. However, Dr. Lutz says sometimes there is a lag between the local numbers and the state numbers. Um, so oftentimes it's sort of a triangulation of data um, and they're not all coming out at the exact same time, but essentially all all cases identified in Spokane County are listed at some point with maybe some time lags on both our site as well as the state site. The Spokane Veterans Home also brought in on-site testing just a few weeks ago to make sure both residents and employees can be tested quickly and efficiently. Well, are you a VA or Social Security recipient with kids? You'll want to file now to get an extra $500 in stimulus money. In order to receive the added $500 per dependent, beneficiaries will need to use a special IRS tool for non-tax filers you see right here. You'll want to scroll to the bottom of the page until you see the enter your information right there and that's how you can get started. SSI and VA recipients with children should file that information by May 5th. The IRS says they project those eligible will receive their stimulus check by mid-May. However, if you receive Social Security retirement, SSDI and RRB, that deadlines to provide dependent information has already passed. If you did provide dependent information, you'll receive that extra $500 with a tax return. We needed it weeks ago and um, the stress and uncertainty that not having that check there. And, and I, I appreciate lawmakers who are discussing another round of stimulus, but we also need to get the first round of stimulus into the hands of families who need it right now. Where is my stimulus check? That's the question on a lot of Americans minds right now. As of last week, an estimated 60 million people are still waiting for their checks. And with May's bills coming up soon here, many people are still waiting to get their stimulus payment. So the Treasury Department says that up to 80 million people were reportedly paid by April 17th. Those are the people who filed a 2018 or 2019 tax return and used direct deposit. SSI recipients will be paid by mid-May. Paper checks will start going out on April 24th, and the last group of people to get paid should be issued paper checks by September 11th. Well, one of the unique ways our local restaurants are working to stay open is offering cocktail kits with food orders. Right now, businesses with a spirits license can actually sell liquor to go, but only in factory sealed bottles. But Spokane City Council wants the state to temporarily allow them to see mixed cocktails. Council member Lori Kinnear drafted that letter. So I was glad to help out. They're taking quite a hit in this. 
He says there were some initial concerns about customers drinking and driving, of course, with the mixed cocktails, but she doesn't believe this will actually be an issue. The Washington Hospitality Association sent its own letter advocating the temporary regulation change. The letter says many other states are already offering cocktails to go and that cocktails provide a valuable revenue source. The city of Spokane cannot allow businesses to offer mixed cocktail drinks until the board agrees to make this temporary change. Across the state line now, Idaho still has a stay at home order in effect right now. The governor's current plan, even at its most optimistic, would not allow bars or restaurants to open for at least another month. But that isn't stopping the Coeur d'Alene Casino. Recently, they announced they'd be reopening with safety restrictions on Friday. But today, we learned some aspects of the casino have already opened. With more on this, let's turn to Casey Decker. The Coeur d'Alene tribe actually ordered the reservation shut down before Governor Brad Little did the rest of Idaho. But now, citing a lack of cases on the res or the surrounding county, the tribe is starting to lift its restrictions, and that includes the casino. Today, it began a limited reopening. Guests can start booking rooms at the hotel, and some games and restaurants may be available. However, a spokeswoman says because the property is so large, it may take a while to be fully ready. They expect a more formal opening to the general public on Friday. But there will be some restrictions. For starters, masks will be required for everyone on the property. Secondly, not everything will be open. The buffet will be closed until further notice. Sports betting won't exist mostly because there are no sports right now. All large gatherings and events like concerts and certain promotions are still postponed. The hotel gym closed indefinitely. Some things will be closed at first, but may later reopen. They include the Chinook restaurant, bingo, and the spa. Finally, there will be social distancing protocols. As with many grocery stores, the casino says tape markers will be on the floor to enforce six feet guidelines. In addition, some restaurant tables will be removed and some game machines turned off to reduce even the chance of crowding. The tribal council called the decision a difficult one, saying, quote, protecting lives and protecting livelihoods don't have to be mutually exclusive. The casino funds many of the tribe's key programs. Meanwhile, the stay-at-home order in Idaho remains in effect, but as a federally recognized tribe, Coeur d'Alene isn't subject to state law. Casey Decker, Creme 2 News. You hear tonight, poison centers across the state are seeing a spike in calls as more people are exposing themselves to cleaning and disinfecting agents. That's according to the Washington Poison Control Center. They've received 23% more of these calls compared with the same time period from last year. The trends also holds nationally as well. Researchers from the CDC say they suspect but can't provide the spike in accidental poisonings from cleaners and disinfectants is related to this pandemic. At least four states have reported an increase of calls made to poison control centers following President Trump's comments last week. President Trump appeared to suggest injecting disinfectant products as a possible method to treat coronavirus patients. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? However, President Trump says he was merely being sarcastic when suggesting that chemical disinfectants or ultraviolet light could be used to treat coronavirus. Washington State Emergency Management issued a public statement the same day as President Trump made that suggestion saying, quote, please don't eat Tide Pods or inject yourself with any kind of disinfectant. Please don't do that. Well, have you ever wondered what makes up the genetic code of the coronavirus? I'll give you a hint, it's even tinier than a cell. We take a really close look at what makes up this spiky, deadly virus and why it's so easily contracted from person to person. You've seen pictures of the coronavirus, but what really makes this spiky ball tick? It's too tiny to see with the naked eye, so you have to think small. Picture just one strand of hair and stretch it out. Imagine laying a dozen cells across that strand of hair. That's about how big some of your lung cells are. Next to a human lung cell, the coronavirus is tiny, a hundredth of the width. The potent stuff is even smaller. The virus's guts, a strand of something called RNA. Similar to our own DNA, this is genetic code, instructions for making copies of the virus. But to do that, the virus needs something it doesn't have, a cell. So it evolved a clever way to get inside yours. The key is the outside envelope and the crown of spikes that gives coronavirus its name. 
It's not decorative. This is an elaborate disguise, a fraud the virus uses to trick its way in. You can think of your cell like a factory surrounded by a fortress wall. The factory inside makes stuff your body needs, and all over the outer walls are special doors. Each door finds and pulls in specific stuff the factory needs. The virus uses one door in particular, the ACE2 receptor, which grabs onto proteins and brings some of them into the cell. The spike on this coronavirus looks like the real deal, but it's a Trojan horse. Once the receptor grabs the spike, the virus can fuse with your cell's outer wall, then slip through it almost like a ghost. Inside the human cell, the virus starts uncoding, releasing its RNA. This starts a process that ends up using parts of the factory in your cell to make new copies of the virus. And more copies and more copies. Those new copies start leaving the cell and can travel to other parts of your body to infect more. Scientists are studying the details of every step of the virus's life cycle. If we can find a way to interrupt any part of that cycle, it could lead to a new treatment and stop or even slow down the spread. A little biology lesson for you tonight here. Well, switching gears now to weather. It was a pretty windy, breezy day to start our work week here in the Illinois Northwest. One area even seeing a dust storm. So meteorologist Thomas Patrick joining me live in studio now. So Thomas, are we expecting more wind tonight or tomorrow? Actually, the winds are starting to slow down <laughs> as of this evening. That's certainly the uh, good news. But yeah, we had quite an active day weather-wise between the showers, the thunderstorms, and yes, that dust storm down on the Palouse. But things getting much better heading into the evening hours. In fact, the winds right now just 16 miles per hour that down from as high as 45 miles per hour earlier today. So big improvement and those winds will continue to slow down. This is what it looked like earlier in the afternoon. You see the uh, uh, the the thunder and the lightning on our radar at that time. Certainly plenty of people across Spokane and Coeur d'Alene did hear that not as much over the Palouse, but with less rain that meant there were more. There was more dust in the air that rain not able to keep it down and matted on the ground. So you see that just off in the distance in that particular shot, but on Highway 26, that's where it was particularly bad. As you look straight into the dust storm, almost no visibility, despite still being able to see those blue skies and the cloud cover overhead. So you kind of have to treat that like a blizzard, but that is long gone. That is now an afterthought because the weather is much nicer for tomorrow and much warmer for the rest of this week. So I'll detail just how warm we are talking by Wednesday all in just a few minutes. You really don't know how it is until you see pictures like that. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Thomas. Well, so let here tonight. Students and teachers were reunited earlier in Deer Park today, but what they're doing is more than just handing out homework. We'll show you how when we come back. But first here, before we go to break, we want to give a shout out to Rachel Douglas. She's a senior at Lewis and Clark High School. Her family says they're so proud of the woman she's becoming. We love giving a shout out to you, the seniors. So keep sending in your photos. Text 2020 to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you a submission link.